Lawn Gnome, welcome back to another Funko Pop update. Of course, this will be for May 2022. If you are new to my channel, let me just say welcome. It is a pleasure to have you, and for all of you returning, I'm hoping that you are ready for another great discussion of Funko news, and yes, another collection update. So, I gotta say that I don't know how it happened. Either... Funko or Entertainment Earth has my house bugged, or someone from one of those companies has actually been watching my Funko Pop updates. Because earlier this year, when we were officially announcing that we were on the road to 100 episodes of Funko Pop updates here on my channel, it was episode 90 when, even though I had something to showcase, I thought that it was going to be the last time that I was going to be showing my collection updates for a while because I didn't have anything new to showcase. Case. I actually said four words that clearly triggered somebody, and that was, I ran out of pops. No sooner than that video was posted that a few weeks later, before my next update video was posted, there was a package in my mailbox. And then a couple of weeks later, there were three packages at my mailbox. And then there were two, and there's even one, as I'm recording this video today, which is the first day of May, there is going to be a package showing up at my front door today. So I am happy to say that at least until episode 95, there will definitely be new additions to my collection to showcase. And I'm actually quite happy about that. And for another reason. You know, I've been saying that I have not really been feeling Funko lately. Like, I really felt that my collecting was coming to an end. But... For some strange reason, Funko is listening, I'm pretty sure, because they have been releasing new glam shots of new additions that are coming in certain lines, and I've just been getting excited all over again. And I actually have a decent amount of pre-orders for 2022. I don't know how much further we're going to go in regards to anything new that Funko is going to offer. I mean, I'm going to be honest here, there's a lot more that they're making that I really don't care for as opposed to things that they're showcasing that I am really caring for. But I am going to be proud to say that I am going to be collecting a decent amount in my collection this year, and I believe we're not exactly there yet, but we are literally on the cusp of my collection hitting a milestone number of 400 Funko Pops. Now, that may not seem large to most major Funko collectors out there, but considering the fact that I am someone who is definitely on the older side, and now I have a lot more responsibilities coming my way because... If you haven't been checking out my channel just because you're new or you haven't watched in a while, I am literally days away from leveling up to fatherhood. My new baby is literally about to arrive into this world any day now, and I'm extremely excited to just welcome this little one, and more importantly, when the little one grows, give this baby an opportunity to see just how crazy daddy is. But we will see what happens when that day comes. Either way, I'm just very excited about my fun coat collecting and everything else right now that's happening in my life. All of those anxieties and pressures that I have been feeling ever since we had our basement flooded, everything is really starting to finally move forward and come together at least until the next big storm comes our way. But we're working on making sure that that does not cause any problems. But that's not why we're here. Today we're here to talk about Funko Pops and all of the new Funko news that came out in the month of April. So let's start off episode 93 and see how my collection has been going. So because of the timing, and what we did last month, because last month we featured a new addition to my Star Wars collection, and a new addition to my Pop Rocks collection, which of course featured Iron Maiden's Power Slave as my very first Funko album, because of the fact that a new Star Wars pop came into my collection, and a new Iron Maiden pop came into my collection, I said, you know something? Let's do Star Wars and Iron Maiden again. So... This is a very interesting grouping because of the fact that one of these is actually one that has been around for a while, and one of them is a pop that I ordered so many months ago, and it is great to finally have it. So we're going to go in that actual order. The first pop that we're going to take a look at is my newest addition to my Star Wars collection. So this is one of the 
coolest looking characters in all of Star Wars canon, and that, of course, is the android General Grievous from the Separatist Army, and was featured beautifully in Star Wars Episode Three, and also the short micro-series of Gendy Tartakovsky's Clone Wars before they officially made the Clone Wars animated series, which was CGI. So, this is a, a Hot Topic exclusive. This is the second time that they made General Grievous. The first time was from Walgreens, and I'm really, really glad that I passed up on the Walgreens one, because when I see this brand new version of General Grievous, I think that they did so much better with this one, and we'll go into the details in just a little bit. But... I passed on this one when he officially came out, and I, I never understood why, especially considering the fact that I seem to be collecting Star Wars lackey villains, because I have Grand Moff Tarkin, I have Count Dooku, I even have Darth Maul and Commander Cody, I don't have Darth Vader, and I don't have Darth Sidious, and I don't even have Boba Fett, and I just said to myself, you know what? If I can get my hands on General Grievous, the Hot Topic exclusive, then that would basically, I, I would say, complete my collection of Star Wars villain lackeys. And now that I actually have it, I actually have to say that this is a very, very well-sculpted pop. What I love so much is that they really focused on the rust of the robot. I absolutely love the little brown smudges and the streaks and also the on discoloration of General Grievous's face, and one of the biggest improvements that they did on him was definitely the eyes, because the original Walgreens exclusive is just two black eyes, but here you got yellow eyes, and they're not perfect circles because you have those red eyelids, and you have the beautiful shapes, and when you take a look at the details on the body, there's just so much more of it, and the, the lightsabers are perfectly put together. I guess the reason why, if I could really think back as to why I didn't buy him when he first came out, was probably because of the fact that I was waiting for a more dynamic version of him, or maybe a movie moment that featured him fighting Obi-Wan with his hands basically flailing the lightsabers, causing fire on the floor. Like, that was just a really cool moment, but who knows if we're ever going to get that at this point? And when it comes to Funko Pops, you either have to capitalize or you're just going to miss that boat. And I know that for a fact, and so many Funko fans know that as well. But let's just turn him around because he also looks beautiful on the back. I mean, beautiful details, especially the rim of the head, as well as his actual back. All the details and the colors, the paint jobs, perfect. Especially the feet as well, perfect. This is a beautifully designed pop, and I am so happy to have it in my collection. And that's basically what I'm thinking is going to happen. I don't foresee anything else coming out with General Grievous at this point, and... If they do, at this point, make a movie moment, well, I don't think I'm going to go for it, because as far as I'm concerned, the movie moments these days are really not looking as, like, Funko's putting a lot of effort into them, but, you know, prove me wrong, Funko, prove me wrong. So the next pop, of course, we're going back to Iron Maiden, and even though I had already collected an Iron Maiden Funko pop, here's the thing, it's Eddie, it's their mascot, and there are so many forms of Eddie, it's really, really hard not to have more than one. I mean, you could say that about so many other Funko Pops that have come out these past couple of years, like, you can never have too many Batmans, you can never have too many Mickeys, you know? that That's just the way Funko goes. But, for me, it's Eddie, because there are so many wonderful albums that this band has, I'm actually seeing them in concert in October, I cannot wait because I believe it's their Best of the Beast tour, oh man, it is gonna be so incredible, and I wasn't sure if this specific Funko Pop was going to be made, and it is the seventh son of the seventh son, Eddie. This is my favorite Iron Maiden album. This album has my favorite song that Iron Maiden wrote, Can I Play With Madness? But they also have great songs on that album like Moonchild and The Evil That Men Do and The Clairvoyant. There are just some unbelievable songs on that album. It's a fan favorite amongst many people who love this band. And they did not disappoint with this pop, even though it is a smaller pop, but it's literally just a torso with a head and hands just levitating over water, and I love the base because it's water. You even see the little splash effects. It's fantastic, and I love the little embryo that he is holding. They did so many amazing details on it to even give you the little 
painful looking face and the only thing I don't like about this is that this little piece here which looks like an apple it's supposed to have a little bit of a green tint and they seem to have forgotten to do that but the flaming head perfect we turn it around it, it, it's, it's beautiful. This is one of the best looking pops and pretty much all the Iron Maiden pops that Eddie is made into are great. I don't foresee them making any more of them at this point in time. I mean, they could make a matter of life and death one. They could make a dance of death one. I personally think that if they make a final frontier one, I would consider getting that one. I mean, would they make more pop albums? I don't know because Power Slave, it's really, really hard to top that one unless maybe they do Brave New World. I don't know. The thing is, Iron Maiden is so versatile and Eddie is so versatile you can do so many things with Iron Maiden and clearly Funko has shown us that they can. So I also will promise that this is the last time that you will see a Star Wars and Iron Maiden collection update. There's going to be so many other things in store and I'm looking forward to showing them to you but for now let's get into the news. As always, we will start off with the news with the Funko Shop's newest exclusives, and it's only one this time. It is the newest edition in the Princess Collection, the Gold Princess Collection, and it is Pocahontas doing the Colors of the Wind thing that she does, and of course, along with the pop, you will be able to get a collectible pin. We got a couple of new t-shirts that are being offered. We've got some brand new Marvel, DC, and anime ones for you, so whatever is your fancy, go out and get them. Also, a whole bunch of new additions from Loungefly, backpacks, wallets, etc., and these are definitely some serious fan favorites. The ones that truly stand out for me are the Jurassic Park. I love the Jurassic Park logo backpack. That is absolutely fantastic. I also love the Star Wars prequel trilogy backpack, not to mention the one that features Pinocchio, as well as the Beatles Sgt. Pepper's one. And speaking of backpacks, Loungefly was also doing some very special offers for the brand new Gabriel Iglesias show, which is a brand new Loungefly backpack, as well as a series of pins and other accessories. Also, some other real special ones that are being offered, like a Beau Bichette pop that is featured only in Canada for the MLB line, the Toronto Blue Jays, and a Jurassic World special glow-in-the-dark Dilophosaurus. I believe you can only get this at Universal Studios. I might be wrong, but if they're doing that, that's very similar to what Disney's been doing with the Disney parks. Also, with Pride Month literally on the way, the Funko It Gets Better project is featuring the three brand new Pride characters, and these are actually characters that are Pride in the comic. We've got Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and this to me looks like a brand new version of Robin because if this is Tim Drake, it makes a lot of sense because in recent years, Tim Drake came out as bisexual and you can also get a triple pack over at Walmart. Some brand new exclusives for the WWE line, which is always growing. The one that really stands out to me, without a doubt, is the classic Macho Man Randy Savage doing what he did best when he was alive. You could pick that one up along with some others at Entertainment Earth. And we also have a couple of additional exclusives from everywhere, including a amazing GameStop Bad Batch Quince pack. You could basically get all of the characters. I still have yet to watch the actual show on Disney+, Plus, but after seeing them in the last season of Clone Wars, I am very excited to watch this one because I have finally caught myself up in watching all of the other Star Wars shows that came out, and the only one that I really sort of enjoyed the most was Star Wars Visions. But we also finally found out where that Earth Day Gandalf is finally coming from, and it's the Box Lunch exclusive. So, Box Lunch is still doing an Earth Day thing, just you were able to get more of the Earth Day ones over at Walmart. Also from Box Lunch, the new Thumper. Absolutely adorable. Target is also announcing some Jurassic Park exclusives. There's going to be more featured in the next pop update, and you all probably know that. Uh, some lounge fly stuff, including some brand new pins and some movie moments, which I personally feel, unless you're talking about the current movie that's on the way, you're better off just going straight with the movie moments. So we've got Timmy hiding from the raptors, which is an iconic scene from the original movie, and Dr. Sattler looking at the sick triceratops. Although, for me personally, 
I think we all would have appreciated Dr. Grant putting his ear next to the sick Triceratops, listening to its heart and watching its breathing. That is a more iconic moment from that scene. But it's still really good. The details are incredible. And a whole bunch of new Amazon exclusives, including the conclusion of the four-piece build scene from Stranger Things. I, I knew it. I knew exactly how this series was going to end. We also got a brand new VHS box of a goofy movie, and we did get the final piece in the Duel of the Fates set, and it is Qui-Gon Jinn. And once again, looking at this entirety, I wish that this was just one single piece because I would have easily bought it. I am not going to be investing $90 in a three-piece set that looks absolutely terrible inside their respective boxes. So Funko, I appreciate what you did because this is a beautiful scene. It is something that should have become a piece of the Star Wars Funko collection a long time ago, but I think you did it all wrong, guys. I'm sorry. And more exclusives. We have a Metallic Mandalorian coming to us. It is a glow-in-the-dark as well, as well as a brand new... Oh boy. I'm not surprised this is happening. It's Homer Through the Hedge. This is the meme of all memes, and what's even more funny about this specific Simpsons pop is the fact that I literally have been re-watching The Simpsons, and this is from the Season 5 episode of Homer Loves Flanders, and I literally just watched it. I am quite surprised that this moment has become what it is, but I am also very happy that it is becoming a pop on its own. Of course, one of the biggest things that happened in the end of March into April was the release of the Marvel Studios' brand new Disney Plus show, Moon Knight. And we got so many, and we got so many good-looking pops, including a couple of exclusives. We've got Moon Knight in both forms, as Steve and as Mark. We also got a couple of versions of Khonshu. We also got Lily. We also got Arthur Harrow, as well as a t-shirt and a Funko Shop exclusive of Moon Knight. Uh, if you watched the show, I know I did, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And I will have a review coming very soon over at That's Comical, so watch for that. And speaking of Marvel, we got some brand new comic covers, including two versions of a PX Previews exclusive, celebrating their 40th anniversary. Congratulations, PX Previews. Uh, the first cover of the very first solo Venom series, which was written by Dave Michelini, who is now doing a five-issue miniseries of the same name, that is Venom Lethal Protector. So you can get the regular, or you can get the glow-in-the-dark version. There's also going to be a Target exclusive of a comic book version of Groot, which which looks wonderful, very, very dynamic. And of course, with all the Moon Knight hype, you, ha you have to get the first cover appearance of Moon Knight in Marvel Spotlight, and I definitely am going to be picking this one up because I have been reading the Moon Knight comics. I haven't been reading the newest issues. I read the first six issues of the Jen McKay run, which is currently out, and it's wonderful, but... I definitely said to myself, if I was going to get something of Moon Knight, this is perfect because I love the artwork, and I also know for a fact that he is standing on a moon-shaped base. We also have more Marvel. Yes, it's definitely a month for Marvel, and we have the conclusion of the Armor series of Iron Man, a new addition to the Walmart exclusive of the Benatar, which is a sleeping Drax, and two more pops that I am adding to my collection. Of course, I had to get myself the third installment of the Spider-Man vs. Sinister Six, and that, of course, is Amazon exclusive, and it is going to be Sandman. It looks wonderful. This is really coming together. I am really curious to see which pop is coming out next. I believe it's going to be Mysterio. And then a pop that just came out of nowhere, also Spider-Man themed, and it is the Entertainment Earth exclusive of the notorious head of the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson. When I saw this pop come out in terms of its glam shot, I was kind of excited about it because it looks really, really great. But I have to be honest, I decided that I wasn't going to get it when I first saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Yeah, I'll I'll eat my shoe with this uh, little thing. Yeah, I did in the end give in and said to myself, if I don't get this one, I don't think we're ever going to get another more perfect version of J. Jonah Jameson, especially the newspaper. That's really what says it all. I mean, 
I personally would have loved a J. Jonah Jameson from the very first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man film. I would have loved to have seen him with the cigar in his mouth, but considering the fact that we didn't even get a 1966 Burgess Meredith Penguin with the cigarette in his mouth, I had a feeling we're not going to get the cigar either. We're not even going to get Wolverine with a cigar in his mouth, I promise you that. So, yeah, I am going to be adding the third installment of the Sinister Six, Sandman, and J. Jonah Jameson to my collection very soon. Along with Moon Knight, and along with all of this, my goodness, I think this may be the largest amount of Marvel Pops that have been revealed in a single month. We, of course, are getting Thor Love and Thunder. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has just hit theaters, and Thor... Love and Thunder is right around the corner. There are so many awesome-looking pops here, including the Mighty Thor. We also have Gore the God Butcher. Korg is back. We got an adorable pop ride of Thor with these goats. This is just, like, the coolest thing that I've ever seen. But there's also going to be some pocket pops. There's going to be a Walmart-exclusive four-pack, as well as some other really cool-looking exclusives. Finally, going away from Marvel, we have got new additions to Funko Gold. Again, still not investing in these because I have no idea what these are really like, and I have no idea if people are even buying these. Got some classic players, including Shaquille O'Neal, Allen Iverson, and even Larry Bird and Dennis Rodman. And what I'm really loving about some of these is that their chases are in their classic all-star jerseys. I kind of love that. And... The big news was there's going to be an extension to the gold line, so clearly somebody is buying these. It's in the sports category. We're going to be getting baseball players. So I am really curious to see what the first wave is going to look like. Maybe there will be a Met. I'd like to see it. We also have some brand new Popsies, a bunch of NBA stars, as well as a brand new Moana, a Charlie Brown, and a Jim from The Office. Moving on to movies, we are celebrating a landmark 50 years of The Godfather, the original film with Al Pacino, Marlon Brando, and James Caan. And, and wouldn't you know, here are the three characters that are going to become Pops. I personally love the Vito Corleone Pop. I mean, it's the ex iconic moment of the beginning of the film, him sitting in the chair with the cat, but no, I am not going to be investing in any of these, even though I think the details on them are fantastic, especially the Michael Corleone, but I'm still waiting for Goodfellas, guys. I mean, come on, Funko has been making pops for over 10 years. I think it's time to finally give us some Goodfellas, and you know that if you do, I will buy them. And we've got the brand new Jurassic Park film, Jurassic World Dominion, and so many different versions of dinosaurs, as well as some of your iconic characters, including a Walmart exclusive of Dr. Grant. We've got everything from Pocket Pops to Mystery Minis to various exclusives, and the details on all of these do look fantastic. But will I be getting them? No, I will not be, because Jurassic Park, even though it is a iconic series of films, it's just not one that I would want to add to my collection personally. A brand new line of Funko Sodas, which are definitely catching on. I have mentioned that I did add a brand new one to my collection, and you will see it one of these days. But we've got two Lord of the Rings, a regular Frodo Baggins, and a Funko Shop exclusive Invisible Frodo Baggins. We've got a Wreck-It Ralph. We've got the Hanna-Barbera classic character Squidly Diddly. We've got a Jawa, as well as some others. If you are collecting these sodas, I'm sure you're excited for some of these new ones. And we got a brand new soda case, and it was Scooby-Doo. So you get the soda casing, which I actually have heard is insulated. You can put sodas in these cases, which I think is really, really cool. And you have a good chance of getting some chases. And some of these chases include Shaggy holding a box of Scooby Snacks and Scooby Dumb. We got some brand new iconic foods, including Mike and Ike a Hershey bar, Twizzlers, and a movie theater popcorn and soda. <laughs> I don't even know if anyone's even going to buy these. Speaking of the movies, we are getting a brand new line of the new Disney Pixar film, Lightyear, including some exclusives. I am a little upset and happy at the same time that Lightyear is not going to be going straight to Disney+. Plus. It is going to be going to theaters, so unfortunately, I'm personally going to have to wait a little bit until I see it for specific reasons, but I am excited to see this movie because it's just got me so curious. A whole series of new pop pins have been revealed, including Harry Potter, some serial icons, Up, and Demon Slayer. And Disney is doing a very interesting thing over at their theme parks. They've teamed up with Loungefly to make a series of iconic 
merchandise celebrating the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, and as of now, we have gotten three of them. It is a Fantasyland series, a Tomorrowland series, and an Adventureland series. I wouldn't be surprised if a Frontierland series is going to be coming shortly, but if I do get word out and see if I can get some glam shots, I will send them to you. And these will all include everything from backpacks to Mickey ears, as well as an exclusive Mickey plush. And finally, we got two new waves of NFTs. We got some specific speed, Space Dancer Freddies, as well as a brand new series of DC. And this is what gets me all the more pissed off about NFTs, because I'm looking at the physical pops that you could possibly get, and you've got some really good ones here. You've got the Eradicator, you've got Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, you've even got two versions of Batman, one of them is the Rebirth Batman, and I'm just like, these are pops that if you sold them in retail or even exclusives like at Entertainment Earth, I would buy them because I don't have a Green Lantern pop in my collection as of now. I would love one, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, and if I was able to get my hands on Kyle Rayner, that's the one that I would probably get because that's my Green Lantern. That's the one that I grew up with. I would take Kyle Rayner over Hal Jordan any day of the week, but unfortunately, that's not what's happening here. You've got to invest in the NFTs, which I will not be, so... There's no way that I'm going to be able to get my hands on one of these amazing-looking DC Pops. So, Funko, I know you know what you're doing, but I'm just not on board. But other than that, I am quite satisfied with everything that's coming out. And as of now, everybody, I will definitely say, based on what I'm already seeing in terms of glam shots that have been released for June, next month's pop-up date is going to be a good one as well. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please put your comments in the box below. I am really excited for the next couple of months, especially because of the fact that San Diego Comic-Con is right around the corner, and I am very excited to know that Funko is going to not only be live at San Diego Comic-Con, but also be live at New York City Comic-Con as well. Great things are happening in the world right now, even though there are a couple of things that make the picture look a little bit bleaker, but we just have to find those little glimmers of hope in the darkness, and I will say that Funko is one of the leaders in regards to doing so. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.